Would it surprise you if I told you that all the fruits and vegetables that you see in this picture didn't exist for our Paleolithic ancestors? And we as humans have created these in the form that we see them now nearly over the past 10,000 years. You may have heard people speaking of the Paleolithic diet and much debate has surrounded what exactly our ancestors ate. You may hear the vegan and vegetarian community speaking of how our ancestors were mostly vegetarian, foraging from wild fruits and vegetables. And on the other side, you may hear the carnivore community speaking of how our ancestors were completely carnivorous. So who is correct in this situation? And what evidence do we have to explain why we think this? After doing a bit of research into the Paleolithic diet, I noticed something very interesting. Most of the food that was recommended in our modern day Paleolithic diet didn't exist during Paleolithic times. And it was very interesting for me to see that all these foods that were being recommended had no historical relevance. And due to them not existing during this time, could not have been eaten in Paleolithic times. So this led me on a very interesting path in which I tried to discover what the real Paleolithic diet was. And the results were quite interesting for me. But why would such a pursuit exist? Why on earth would we want to know exactly what the diets of our distant ancestors were? It would stand to reason that as humans evolved for hundreds of thousands of years to eat a specific diet, if we too followed that diet now, it would lead us to optimal health. While it is true that we have been eating a varied diet for the past 10,000 years, evolution doesn't work this quickly. It may produce some small effects, but overall, when compared to the absolutely massive amount of time we spent eating this other diet, it pales in comparison. Understanding what this diet was that our ancestors ate for millions of years would show us more or less what our bodies are designed to eat and subsist off in a perfect system. Brushed off as a fad diet, the Paleolithic diet aims to mimic exactly what our ancestors ate during the Paleolithic period, which is roughly 2.5 million years ago to 10,000 BC. Most people grossly incorrectly estimate what was in our diets during this time due to the lack of knowledge of modern farming and what exactly was available to the people alive at that time. If we could climb into a time machine and teleport back to this time, scan the available resources in the environment, the results may be shocking and many people especially regarding what plants were available to eat, would be amazed to see that there were almost none. You see, if you take a look at the recommendations for a Paleolithic diet on the internet, you'd find it to be so horrendously inaccurate that it's a wonder who devised these Paleolithic diet recommendations and if they'd ever done any research in this at all. Of the fruits and vegetables and nuts that are recommended by advocates of the Paleolithic diet, the majority of these didn't exist during Paleolithic times in the form that we see them today, and many of them weren't found at all. When we understand the absolute massive amounts of time that humans have existed on this planet, and then we add that into the type of food we're eating during this time, we will understand that humans in the current day are eating food that only exists now and has only existed for a very short amount of time when compared to that absolutely massive timeline. Incredibly, we could go as far as to say that about 
70% of our diet today is comprised of foods that our ancestors never ate for the past 2 million years. Around about 2 million years ago, Homo erectus was colonizing the world as an incredibly successful early human. And from the fossil records, from the contents of their living quarters, we see that this hominid was incredibly carnivorous. It hunted and scavenged to fulfill its calorific needs. So if we look at the living quarters found around Homo erectus, we can see the bones of animals that have been butchered. And how do we know that they have been butchered? Well, we can see cut marks from stone tools indicating that the meat has been cut from the bone. We also find skulls that are shattered to extract the brain from them, which only some predators are able to do. Humans filled this niche by using blunt tools, whereas most predators such as lions and leopards don't really ever try to get into the skull. So let's take a look at this timeline so we can understand what exactly it is our ancestors ate. Now, at this point, many people will probably be arguing the fact that humans have been farming for a very long time. But what is a long time? Because we know that humans have had farming for around 10,000 years, possibly longer, and possibly much shorter in many populations. This farming brought about the large consumption of grains and some vegetables, and some fruits, yes. The issue is that 10,000 years when equated to 2 million is an incredibly short time. 2 million years of evolution compared to 10,000 years of evolution is quite an overwhelming number when you think about it. If a person truly understands just how long evolution takes to adapt to new food types, and the implications that come with that, they will understand that these 10,000 years, while definitely having some effect, pale in significance in the 2 million years. Consider too that humans spent 90% of our existence in just one continent before moving out and colonizing the world. Africa was our home for almost the entire time we have been on this planet. And Africa doesn't really contain almost any of the vegetables and fruits that people eat these days. We spent an incredibly long time in one continent, subsiding off of a very specific diet, which did not include most of these modern foods and modern plant foods. So not only did we not have these modern day equivalent versions of our vegetables, fruits, grains, but we were not even in the same geographical area to consume these things. We didn't even have the chance to encounter them. So I realized at this point, I haven't really explained myself as to why these plants were created and exactly how. And in our next part of this video, we will go into detail explaining exactly the process, why, how, and when it happened, and how exactly our diet changed from this primal diet that I was speaking of into the modern diet that we have now and the diet that we've had over the past 10,000 years. So I've left you in a bit of a cliffhanger, forgive me, but in our next video, I will explain everything. Mm -hmm.